So when you look at someone who does intense labor, example, for work versus someone who, you know, maybe sits in an office chair from nine to five, the metabolic demand of the laborer is going to be so much higher. Hello and welcome back to the Jake Bowler podcast where I'm going to discuss all things health, fitness and mindset related. Let's get right into it. Again, for those listening and watching on YouTube, I will do my best to look into the camera but I can't promise anything. Thank you for listening to the podcast, applying all the topics that I'll talk about um, into your daily lives, sharing it with your friends and your family. I'm so humbled and full of gratitude. Again, I am actually going to start the podcast off with a strong quote that I heard uh, recently, um, which I really resonated with and makes a lot of sense once you sort of break it down a little bit. Responsibility is your ability to respond. Like essentially, it's the only, it's only you, it's, it's only you who can do the task that you've set for yourself. You're the reason you achieve your goals. You can't put that on someone else essentially. If you look at the word responsibility, it is broken down into response and ability. So let's say, for example, I'm going to use a rule. I'm going to use an example. You have a dream, you have a goal to become a business owner. You set yourself the goal and you have a clear five-year plan, for example, could be a two-year, three-year, whatever it could be. Uh, You know, there are things that will happen along the way that may slow down your progress, they get in the way but is your ability to respond to those things, to respond to this, um, respond to the callings that happen along the way, and and essentially your ability to adapt and change to these things that will get you to your goal. So no one else is going to take responsibility for you. It is yours, yours alone. You know, unless you have a team working for a common goal, then you know, sure, that's that's a little bit different again. Um, but the same concept applies. It's then, then it's your team's ability to respond to things that happen and you know make make the change accordingly. But it's at the end of the day, it's it's your ability to respond. It's your responsibility. So that was the quote. A little bit long, longer than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, uh, this week we're actually going to be decoding metabolism and what metabolism really is. So when we look at calories in versus calories out for weight loss and or gain or maintenance, whatever it is that you want to be doing, or body recomposition where you're um, losing fat but trying to gain muscle at the same time, the calories in portion is like, that's the super simple part and that's the easy part to understand. We eat food and we can track that with apps, you know, such as MyFitnessPal, MacroFactor, whatever you want to use, um, and some of the basic scales you can get from Kmart to just weigh your food and things like that. But when we go into calories out, that's when it becomes a little bit more complex. What I think about when we're looking at metabolism is, I mean, you think of metabolic rate or loosely you relate that to your daily energy expenditure or TDEE, total daily energy expenditure. Now, taking this further, essentially, there's there's three key principles to consider when we're looking at at looking at this your t- total daily energy expenditure. So, three things: you got your your basal metabolic rate or your BMR. So, basically, it's you know how much do you burn just doing nothing at all all day. If you just sat on the couch, did nothing all day, that is how much energy your body would need to function and survive and live. Then you've got your physical energy expenditure, which is, you know, you go to the gym, you go for a walk, whatever it might be. There's also things like NEAT, your uh, non, uh, non-energy non activity, oh, what even is it now? I can't remember what it is. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, so things like fidgeting, sitting here doing this shit with my hands. Um, that's all part of activity and moving, taking in the groceries, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then there's the thermic effect of food. A lot more um, challenging and difficult to track and monitor, but that is still a thing. So, your BMR or your basal metabolic rate, which is the first point in terms of talking about your total daily energy expenditure, is how much your body needs to do its basic metabolic functions, essentially, for the day. Digesting food, pumping blood, using your heart, using your brain, all that sort of stuff. And this actually equates to around... 50 to 70 percent 
I'm pretty sure, um, of all your daily energy use. So it's a lot of your energy. So you're just sitting there doing nothing. It's a lot. Um, you know, there are multiple ways to calculate your BMR through, you know, you know online calculations, um, just with, with a calculator. There's something called the Mifflin St. Gior formula, which you can type a bunch of numbers in and calculate yourself. Pretty, It's pretty simple if you Google it. Um, and there's a few other ways as well. Um, some are less accurate than others, but it is what it is. Getting a rough idea and just making sure you use the same principles and code each time is is the, is the idea anyway that way you're sort of using a good average and uh, next we can consider your your physical activity which is number two so this is the energy consumption this energy consumption it can range from anywhere from 20 to 35 percent depending on the individual whether you're a high level athlete whether you're just going to the gym whether you're you're a bodybuilder whether you do this professionally whether you go for a 30 minute walk every day, it's going to depend on the person. If you get into the small details of this, you can, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, you can talk about your NEAT, like N-E-A-T, which is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, simply meaning the energy you burn from, like I said, fidgeting, bringing the groceries, fidgeting with your pen all day, typing, me talking right now and throwing my hands all over the place. You probably can't see it as much. I'm doing it down lower, but it can be a really neat way um, of increasing your total daily energy or uh, calories burned. No pun intended. Actually, there was, but anyway. Calories burned. Um, if weight loss is your goal, like if you just start fidgeting more and doing more things, you can actually increase how many calories you burn. Um, and there actually has been some studies shown to improve um, some hormonal factors like insulin sensitivity and actually could improve carbohydrate tolerance. Obviously, it's, it's probably a bit of a harder one to, to do studies on and, and to track, but they have shown that you know it can, it can do those things. So fidget more, get a fidget spinner, get a, get a pen you like clicking, I don't know. These factors, you know, they're highly variable um, when comparing, you know, one metabolic, one's metabolism to another, you know, you can't, everyone's different, okay? So when you look at someone who does intense labor, example, for work versus someone who, you know, maybe sits in an office chair from nine to five, the metabolic demand of the laborer is going to be so much higher to which one could uh, try and argue they have a higher metabolism to me, you know, like, oh, you know, some... You hear it all the time, you know, oh, they, they got a, such a higher metabolism than me, like, that's why you're always skinny, that's why you can eat this and you can do this, which yes, they do have a higher metabolism, but it's because their body demands so much more of them, like their, their body's adapted to need so much more energy that yes, their metabolism is going to be higher because they need more energy, so they're going to break down their food quicker, they're going to require that energy a lot faster, um, and they're going to have a higher metabolism, that's just, that's just as, that's how it is. Finally, you know, you can discuss the small um, but not irrelevant uh, thermogenic effect of food. So when we eat, we consume calories to fuel us, but, you know, we eat that, the body's then got to digest that, which is going to require energy. So the body uses that energy to break down and turn that energy into more energy. Pretty simple. So if we look at the, the three main macros, our fats, carbs, and um, protein, uh, our fats have probably the lowest thermic effect, um, then it's carbs, and then it's protein. We eat When we eat a lot of fats, we have the, it, the lowest thermogenic effect, meaning you know, we, we can break down those fats really easily, um, and they can be stored away as energy, which is, and then that's why people have, have a, higher, like a higher fat diet. Because it's so easy to digest that fat gets stored away, fat's a lot harder to burn off, we use it as like a, um, a very low intensity steady state sort of cardio, um, or when we're doing long periods of exercise, that's when we start to break that sort of, st those fats down, so we can burn, we can digest them really easily, but then we can also take longer to, to burn them off, so that's why, you know, having a high fat diet can be negative if you're trying to uh, lose weight or cut or whatever it might be. Then we've got carbs, which is sort of moderate, and then you can also look at um, simple and complex carbs, which I might go into a little bit more in a second, um, and then protein. And this is why it can be so beneficial, because protein is uh, it has the highest thermogenic effect, so basically you're going to burn more calories when we're eating more protein. So this is, this is why it's beneficial to eat a high-protein diet. Not only does it aid in muscle protein synthesis and recovery and help you get absolutely stuck 
staunch and jacked, but it's also going to burn more calories as it's as it's digested. So eat more protein. Pretty simple. That's it. That's what this podcast is. Just eat more protein. Kidding. You know, this also um, explains you know why calories. It's not as simple as you know calories in versus calories out, or the cal- a calorie for a calorie is. It's not true. Because um, you can look at things like simple versus complex carbs or carbohydrates. Complex carbs are like a, a, are a longer chain polysaccharide, essentially, um, which takes a lot longer to digest when you compare it to a simple carb, which is a, a lot, it's like a shorter, ch- if you think of like a chain, like a really long chain is a complex carbohydrate versus a really short chain, which is a, a simple carb. So you might look at a longer chain as like potatoes and then the shorter chain would be a lolly or an energy drink, one's going to be digested. Breaking down a longer chain is going to take a lot longer versus a really short chain, which the body can absorb a lot quicker. And that's why you know, athletes will have like Gatorade and stuff at half time to get some real fast energy into their system. So eating a lot of, a lot of pasta, a lot of bread, not ideal if you... I mean, it is ideal depending on when you eat it and what time you eat it and what you're eating it for. But having too much of it is going to um, slow down your metabolism and ultimately, you know, probably put on a bit of a weight. A lot of us tend to have a preconceived, you know, perception that, you know, nutrition, dieting and food is some big scary monster that we have to tackle and overcome. But, you know, when you look at it and you break it down into its more simplest form, you know, it can be, it can be actually such an easy, extremely powerful thing that can um, not only improve your physique, but it can also, you know, improve your mind to the absolute next level by leaps and bounds, like, I don't mean, I'm not talking about 5 10% here. I'm talking in terms of like physical and mental capacities that will help you increase up to 50, 70, 90%, depending on what your baseline is now and what you're doing currently. But having a good nutrition and understanding all this sort of stuff can help so, so, so much. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. And to summarize this into you know, a bit of a basic form, because that was a lot of information, saying to someone, they have a good or bad metabolism is a lot more complex than that Um, and more complex than just saying, oh, that's how I was born, that's how it is. Look, yes, genetics can play a role um, in this. You know, everyone's basal metabolic rate, so how much you burn, again, how much you burn just sitting there doing nothing, that can can vary from, from genetics, that's true, but one's daily lifestyle and their body composition, so how much muscle or fat um, they have in, in their ratios, you know, where higher muscle mass versus a um, versus fats will burn a lot more calories because the body's trying to maintain that muscle that they have. And then also your, your activity levels, your occupation, your NEAT again, so non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and the types of food that you eat all play a massive role in your metabolism. So it's, it's not as simple as just saying, oh, I was born this way. It's, it, it can be varied and you can change it. Okay, now correct me if I'm wrong here. To me, it's it's sort of funny to me when people say, "Oh, I don't I don't have a weight problem. I have a metabolism problem." It's not funny because they're overweight or they're underweight or whatever it is, or they're a hard gainer or whatever you want to call it. It's just that so many of us don't understand metabolism correctly, and we're taught and we give the, this perception that whatever it is that we're born with is how it is, and it's how it's going to affect our life forever when that's not what it is. And that's going to wrap up that part of the podcast. So if you have any questions around any of this or it interests you or resonates with you and you would like to go deeper into some of these concepts or some of these learnings, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. If you have any questions, feel free to head over to my website or onto my Instagram and send me through a message or an email, whatever it might be, and we can have a chat there. I can go a lot deeper into some of this stuff. This was just sort of trying to summarize it into its most simplest form. Again, calories in is very easy to talk about. Calories out is another thing. That's a lot that we can go into that for, for hours and hours. And again, if you are someone who is struggling in the gym, you're struggling with your own mindset, or you're unsure where you're heading in your fitness and personal endeavors, having self-doubt, you're unsure of why you even trained to begin with, you've lost that purpose, you've lost that drive, that motivation, you're looking for direction or you're wanting to take your fitness to the next level and level up your mindset, 
You know, I'm currently running a one-on-one -on -one training program for hardworking and driven individuals called Ascend. If you're someone who wants to learn all the tools to create your own meal plans that work for you and your body, design the most optimized training routine so that you never have to get a coach again and want to level up your current mindset and change your beliefs to gain confidence and better understand your body to become the best version of yourself, then this is for you. In the program, I give you access to the course, the learnings, the materials delivered by me, one-on-one -on -one calls each week. I give you worksheets to ensure that you understand the material, that you understand it and you master it. We master the modules by applying everything we learn into our daily lives, okay? We do one-on-one -on -one check-ins each week. We're going through the coursework. We go through your physique, your nutrition, your technique on some of the more complex lifts. We reassess your mindset. We make sure your goals are heading in the right direction and we make sure that everything's feeling okay as well. Then we set the goals up for the next week. We answer any questions and we, you know, we keep smashing it and going ahead and making you ascend beyond your limits, become the best version of yourself. So if this is right for you, please send me a message on Instagram saying you're ready, you're ready to ascend, whatever it might be, or we can just have a chat to begin with if you really want to. And then we can get you up on a call completely free and get you on the path to ascend beyond your limits to be the best version of yourself. And that's a wrap on the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. I really do. If, you, if any of this content relates to you and you find it useful, if any of this content relates to you and you find it useful and you want to dive deeper into some of the concepts, then you know, please feel, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm super accessible. You can go on Instagram. I'll message you back pretty quickly, to be honest. Um, with my program, I do only have a limited number of spots each month. So if you want to jump on, jump on quickly. Send me a message. Break that cycle of having no energy, always needing a personal trainer and not progressing in the gym. Stop waiting and change your life now. I'm also, like I said last time, I'm going to, I'm in the process of developing some free ebooks, explaining some of the basics and core principles around training, nutrition, meals, and philosophy, which will be coming soon. If you're already on the program, then you'll have access to some of this stuff already. And um, yeah, if you gained anything from today's episode or any of the other podcasts, I would be so humbled and so so grateful if you know if you could chuck it on your socials, share it with your friends. You know, copy the link and just smack it in an email and send it to every single person you have in your email list. That'd be unreal and greatly, greatly appreciated. As always, guys, I really appreciate the support from everyone and I can't wait to keep bringing you more content to the channel. Until next time, peace.